so you are ready kiran so i yes, am uh, i am going to take your mock interview so first i will be asking you questions for interview and then after we'll have feedback session okay 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 all right uh, so first question is tell me about yourself okay sir first of all thank you for giving me this opportunity to introduce myself my name is kiran pradeep sarunke i belongs to parbani maharashtra i completed my matriculation from gandhi vidyalaya parbani with 82.80% then i did my diploma in mechanical engineering from shri shivaji polytechnic institute parbani with 89% and i am overall first rank holder of my diploma college of 2019 batch recently i completed my b in mechanical engineering from dy patil college of engineering accord pune with 90.60% and i secured third rank in my b of 2022 22 batch sir also sir apart from academics i participated in the state level technical project competition and won the first prize for that also sir i have published one research paper in international journal of advanced research and organization on power generation using coral machine talking about my family sir i belongs to a nuclear family there are six family members in my family myself my father my father is a mechanical engineer he is a government servant I have an elder brother. My brother is a design engineer in the man energy solutions R&D team. My grandmother and my mother they both are homemakers, sir. And so talking about my sixth member, we consider our female dog as a part of family. And uh, my hobbies including, sir, I like uh, gymming. I also have little interest towards the fitness and nutrition stuff. Also, sir, I like uh, traveling, cooking, and swimming. And in my spare time, sir, I would like to listen the devotional songs and read spiritual books. And lastly. I would like to express myself in just one sentence. That is, sir, I want to become engineer who always think out of the box. Thank you, sir. It's all. Okay, it was nice uh, at all. And uh, since uh, I have seen while introducing yourself, you uh, seemed a very studious person. You ranked every time a high. You participated and you achieved a lot in your studies thing and your. class and uh, as you also mentioned you have published thing so don't you think yes, uh, after doing all this you uh, you lost your childhood uh, you lost your uh, free time that can be uh, can be enjoyable like other guys you are not something uh, after all this you can't suppose be too social you must have engaged your uh, yourself very less with the social after all this because for normal guy it seems like uh, without have being a social it one it is only can be achieved so what your point of view uh, yes sir it's not like that basically i am a very socialized person sir i have a lot of friends and uh, in uh, in every uh, saturday and sunday i hang out with them also sir uh, not about like that sir i am a very uh, a very like a uh, I have leadership quality also, sir. Cause till my tenth, I am a head boy of my school. Also, sir, I am a part of the organization of social work that is the uh, in uh, in our uh, district that is called as the Manushi Chibinta. So, in this organization, I, I have worked with them. So, this organization giving the uh, food uh, like uh, clothes to the uh, people who needed it, sir. Okay, all right. Uh, and why do you like to join merchant navy since you are so smart you can get and uh, anywhere you want but why living away from family doing a job in the sea and for a long uh, uh, away from and for a long period of time yes, what sir. do you think sir firstly i would like to mention that i don't look towards merchant navy as a career option i look towards it as my passion my passion towards machine and this passion came to me from my father itself as my father is a mechanical engineer so i am grown up in an environment with a close relationship with the machines and mechanical stuff since my childhood also. and that is also a major reason to study the mechanical engineering and sir i remember that uh, when i was in my second year of diploma one of my relative who is in merchant navy he told me about merchant navy he told me about life on board ship what kind of opportunities and challenges he is getting and all the things in detail manner on that particular day i decided to join merchant navy only uh, for that reason sir i didn't even sit for my campus placement for sir merchant navy gives me many opportunity to use my technical knowledge in a practical hands sir 
Also, I have special, special attraction towards the ocean because I have never gotten any chance to see or experience it. Also, sir, I am also, sir, this job is come with a lot of challenges and opportunities. And according to me, these challenges and opportunity make my personality more bold and stronger, sir. Also, sir, I am a very fitness freak person, sir. Sir, I hate pollution. Sir, selling in those three socials, each day getting up early in the morning, uh, having fresh breath of air, sir, my lungs are really waiting for that. And lastly, why should I forgot to tell you the pride and honor of the uniform, the amplets on the shoulder, it is a definitely a dream for me. And I will achieve that dream because I just don't want to do that job, but I want to live that job with a full passion. Because my father always said to me that for a man who loves his job, uh, work is not like work. It becomes the way of happiness and getting the pleasure. So these are my solid rock reasons to join Merchant Navy only, sir. Yeah. And your rock reason was all about based on your passion and the luxury of this profession. But with that, the loneliness also comes. How you gonna talk, tackle that? The loneliness of being away from your family, the loneliness, you know, being from your loved ones. How you gonna yes, tackle sir. that? Sir, currently, uh, like I see the truth about sir. Uh, so all my colleagues or all my friends, sir, in my, from my childhood, they are going for the jobs for uh, uh, like uh, other districts, other place. But I am in only one here. So still, sir, I am like, uh, so sometimes I get bored, but sir, when I do the meditation and I would start to read books, so I feel very energetic, sir. Also, sir, the gymming also helped me a lot, sir, to, uh, to remove that negativity from me, like loneliness, uh, 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 not motivating, not motivating. So these are the reasons. Okay. Uh, all right. And why there are so many companies out there and since you are talented so why you don't like to join them why why my company why our company why anglo uh, yes sir so basically my biggest and main reason is to join anglo is sir like uh, anglo has number one training facility in india also sir the anglo has good safety culture also it gives me stability because it has a variety of ships like 750 of ships so waiting period is also late, sir. And last and most important is, sir, like Anglo treats their employees as their most important assets. Okay. And <clears throat> if I ask you, can you work under pressure? And have you ever done work under pressure? What would your answer? Uh, yes, sir. I am always ready for work under pressure cause sir when i am under pressure i give my 100 percent and definitely i uh, definitely sir i get success when i work under pressure because uh, i have uh, one share the example like that sir so when i was in my last year of uh, engineering uh, when i was in my uh, second year of engineering that is like the first uh, like after the diploma uh, there are uh, uh, letter entry for the diploma candidates so a uh, lot of time of that first same is going for the admission process. That means our waiting list is for delayed, 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 delayed. So we have remaining only two months for the exam. So in two months, I prepared well, I study hard, I plan, I organize, I manage, and I do my attempt for the exam. And I cleared all the subjects. Also, I scored somewhere 8 point to CGPA over here. Yeah. Since uh, all of uh, that, data you tell you told it seems very you seems very meritorious guy very studious guy but you must know about that there is a lots of physical work you have to go there uh, you have to do there so are you going to tackle it uh, are you ready for that because i don't think so as you will be ready because you are a studious one and so we don't like require Sir, not like studious i am uh, also uh, in my uh, till my team i am also the leader of my kabaddi team sir because i also play the games uh, till my team sir but sir after some time uh, i uh, do not start i have some because of reason i lost interest in sports sir so when i was in my last year of being i recognized that i put out a lot of weight that is 110 kg 115 kg so in a span of one and five one and a half year I 
transform myself from 1015 kg to 70 kg and still i am having the very physical uh, good physical health carry carrying such a pretty amount of decent muscle mass on my face sir. yeah that was quite uh, amazing to know about that you did and i was very impressed i am very impressed about that and tell me about your final year project yes sir so basically i have done a final year project in my b when i was in my final year of b sir so the there are four members in my uh, uh, project the project is uh, based on the power generation using four arm machine and i am a group leader of my project sir the project in you know, a work on a principle of law of energy conservation that means energy neither be created nor be destroyed but it can convert from one form of energy into the another form so the main aim of our project is to make the self powerized gym that means gym can be produce power by its own gym equipment that is the new approach towards the regeneration of energy sir also the we know that sir when we working out in a gym when we working in a gym on the machines a uh, physical energy just used to like uh, put up the weight and no achievable work done is uh, exceeds or uh, uh, no achievable work done is except that uh, physical exercise sir so we have make an attachment which is fitted to the every machine like the peg deck fly machine hammer uh, like uh, barber curl machines uh, uh, chest fly machines every machine so this uh, this attachment is converts the physical energy into the electrical energy by means of the mechanical arrangement so uh, talking about the forearm machine sir we fitted this uh, we fitted and tested this uh, attachment to the forearm machine in such way that because the forearm machine is lighter in weight small in size and uh, like a simple in construction sir so the machine is work like sir when we pull the pulling rod of the forearm machine the linear motion is converted into a rotary motion by means of the drag and pinion arrangement so this pinion is connected to the shaft which is connected by the gear mechanism so when the rack moves in upward direction the pinion tries to rotate and rotational motion is converted to the shaft and this shaft is coupled with a generator this generator so the mechanic so the physical energy is converted into the electrical energy by means of the dc generator and this energy is stored inside the battery so this is the new approach to regeneration of the energy okay it was quite in, uh, incredible but as you mentioned that it is based on first law okay but you should also having that idea that not every energy is going to be convert into work so there will be efficiency factor so it will not like that your input uh, your input energy like your uh, the cost of input for uh, installing the things which you are for which you are getting the energy and the energy you which you are going to going uh, in which you are getting as a out output will be no will be equal or maybe less than how how this can be tackled yes sir so basically talking about the four arm machine so if our gym timing is like uh, 9 uh, like from 6 to 9 pm 6 am to 9 pm suppose a bunch of people working on a four arm machine for a only span of 8 hours in a day so this machine can generate about uh, 3 to 5 kilowatt per week that is for the only one machine if we fitted this uh, arrangement to each and every machine so the our output is very high that means our cost of uh, uh, cost of purchase will be uh, will be recovered in uh, upcoming 2 years only and then you have no need for the electricity no need for the uh, no need for that uh, uh electricity also not for meters but uh, since i know sir the initial cost is very high but uh, there is a, no such kind of the big maintenance over here okay. all right uh, so my last question will be from a non technical side will be how will you survive at sea you must have heard of sea sickness okay yes so i don't i think sir i have never gotten any chance to see or experience it the sea but uh, i assure you that i don't have sea sickness cause uh, when i go for the amusement park i didn't even feel uh, some uh, like i didn't even bother sometimes it is uh, okay for me but i know that sir on ship there are very rough rough weathers changing times changing people changing shift but i will survive over here 
because i have the i have my consistency with a lot of hard work sir i ensure that sir if i am not a smartest guy in a room but i am a hardest guy in that room and i will survive nice to see your motivation uh, now we'll be going on technical uh, question yes, okay so uh, my first question is uh, kiran how the aeroplanes fly in the air what is principle behind this so basically it is happened because of the lift and drag process the aeroplane is uh, going to so when we give the velocity to the aeroplane and when we like uh, going to lift that aeroplane so there are various forces acting on it so lift and drag forces gives the direction and gives the uh, so we know so that it has the propellant because it has the uh, turbines over there big big turbines for the aeroplane so so it is producing the thrust power but lift and drag forces help to aeroplane to give the desired direction like turning giving the different angle for the uh, for the take off what makes the aeroplane fly lift up lift up which principle is behind this mm, for lifting uh, principle anti gravity principle no no actually it's bernoulli principle because of bernoulli principle aeroplanes wings are made in such a way that the lower side of wings got lower pressure and okay. uh, lower side of wings got higher pressure and upper side of wings got lower pressure as you know pressure moves from higher to lower so high to low it's get upward okay yes uh, sir that means high speed creates the low pressure because of that aeroplane okay all right so what is archimedes principle yes sir so archimedes principle state that if a body is partially or fully immersed in a liquid the upward force acting on that body that is called as the bayon force and this bayon force is equal to the weight of liquid displaced by that body displaced by that body okay and what is the boiling point and freezing point so basically the boiling point is the point at which the liquid is converted into the vapor and talking about the freezing point the basically freezing point means the point above which the liquid starts the formation of crystal in which that is called as the freezing point all right it was good uh, and what is the difference between ammeter and galvanometer so basically ammeter is for measuring the uh, current flowing through the circuitry and the galvanometer for uh, voltage sir. i'm not sure uh, yeah. ammeter is for uh am uh, ammeter is for current measuring device it was right galvanometer is uh, instrument for detecting wind measuring a small current a small electric current all right charge a small electric current no, yeah. and voltmeter is for voltage okay and galvanometer can be also converted into voltmeter with certain modifications all right so define pascal law Yes, sir. Basically, Pascal's law states that in a static liquid, the intensity of pressure remains constant, equal in all direction. That means when we apply force on an incompressible fluid, the pressure is acting equal in all direction. And the best example of Pascal's law is the hydraulic press. Hydraulic press. Okay. Define acceleration. So acceleration means the rate of change of momentum. rate of change of momentum sorry sir it's a rate of change of velocity yes it's a rate of change of velocity, velocity. rate of ch- change of momentum is a rate of change of momentum is uh, i cannot recall it's a force force is nothing but rate of change of momentum from second law of motion Okay. So, Kiran, what is Lange law? Yes, sir. So Lange law states that the direction of the induced EMF is such that it opposes the cost producing it. So the EMF is tried to oppose that magnetic field. That is, E is directly proportional to the minus 
delta by delta t where the minus sign shows the uh, minus sign shows the uh, lens law is applicable over here and what is faraday's law yes sir basically faraday's law gives the information about how emf is induced so faraday's law is divided into two statements so faraday's first law says that whenever a changing magnetic field is associated or linked with a conductor the emf is induced in that conductor and when a conductor forms a closed coil the induced emf because of uh, because induced emf or current flow through that coil and faraday's second law states that the magnitude of induced emf is such that it opposes the cost producing okay so yeah. so the magnitude of uh, it says that the magnitude of induced emf is directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux that is e is directly proportional to the delta phi by delta now you are right okay and now i have a question for you that why big ships float and a small pin a small needle sink in water so it is happened because of the archimedes principle sir as we know that if there are more surface area there is a more buoyant force acting on it because if we displace the weight into the larger surface area that means more amount of buoyant force acting from the downward that means we have the higher we have the higher buoyant force as compared to its gravitational force because of that the ship moves because of that ships uh, float on water why iron needle sinks because iron needle has the less surface area as its uh, weight as compared to its weight so buoyant force acting on needle is small as compared to its weight that means the needle has more hello the yeah. needle has the more uh, needle has the more uh, gravitational force or the downward force than the buoyant force and why ice floats on water because of its uh, ice float on water yeah so basically it is happened because of its uh, density difference over there okay and uh, which is denser a needle or water denser uh, uh, uh needle sir needle because needle is sinks inside the water so it's denser yeah because density of needle is more that's why it sinks in yes, water sir. density of yes. ice is less that's why it float on water because of density yes. difference one thing things and well, buoyant force is what rho g h yes rho g no it's rho v g i think it's rho g s buoyant force its pressure is rho g s buoyant force is rho v g the density of water the volume of displaced liquid into gravitational force gravitational force rho v g rho v g rho v g okay so i was trying to confuse you and i was succeeded no problem so uh, kiran have you heard of mirage have you seen that mirage mm -hmm. the deserts no sir. no sir i didn't even know about the mirage mirage okay and have you heard of radar what is radar radar yeah that you must have heard of that radar is used on aeroplanes fighter craft so basically uh, i think radar is used for uh, checking the object uh, object which is in front of us like uh, giving the proper uh, distance between the object from uh, you must have heard of that the and uh, now it is china is making a uh, aircraft that is that can't be under radar that can't be catch under radar okay no problem let's go with the next next question so parts of diesel engine explain yes, it the part, this is function yes, sir, the parts of diesel engines are like it has the engine head which is uh, acts as the uh, so it has the engine head the cylinder liner that means the piston is moved inside the cylinder liner it has the piston so then on the piston there are piston rings over there also in case of the diesel engine there is a fuel injector and in case of the petrol engine there is a uh, spark plug over there 
also there are the inlet and exhaust valve for the safety for the for the fresh charge and the exhaust charge exhaust, exhaust gases so these valves are pre-included valve all as the puppet valve also there is a connecting rod which is connect the piston and the crankshaft uh, with the help of so big end of the connecting rod is connected to the piston with the help of piston pin or gudgeon pin and uh, and the big end of the connecting rod is connected to the crankshaft by means of that uh, crank pin and small is connected to the piston by means of the gudgeon pin over there also it has the camshaft so basically camshaft converts the rotational moment into the radial or uh, radial or the reciprocating motion for the puppet valve for the opening and closing also it has the rocker arm basically rocker arm is the oscillating river which transfer motion from the push rod to that uh, uh, to that puppet valve for the opening and closing of valve also it has the flywheel so basically inertia of flywheel reduces and moderates the fluctuation in speed of speed of the engine also it has the gasket for the better sealing of the engine head and engine block okay and what is the function of piston ring basically piston ring serves the three main function that means it seals it cools and it lubricates so it seals in a such way that during the expansion or during the uh, during the power slow the exhaust gases from the cylinder liner try to escape from the uh, try to escape, escape from the combustion chamber to the crankcase so the piston rings when when the exhaust is applies uh, the pressure on the piston ring the piston ring will expand because of that it is not allow the exhaust gases from go from the combustion chamber to that crankcase next function is like cooling we know that sir during the exhaust stroke or during the power stroke <coughs> tremendous amount of heat is directly acting on that piston so piston ring takes heat from that piston and transfer to that cylinder liner near about 70% of heat exchange is taken place by means of that piston ring also sir it lubricates in a such a way that it forms a protective layer of the lubricating oil all over that cylinder liner also sir it reduces the wear and tear between the piston and the cylinder liner also it uh, maintain the snug between the piston and the proper snug between the piston and cylinder what also, is snug it is snug is the proper uh, proper fitting we can say the proper fitting of the piston inside that uh, cylinder liner also it is doesn't allow the lubricating oil to flow from crankcase to that combustion chamber directly also sir it scraps the extra oil from the cylinder liner and then again supply to that uh, crankcase okay how many types of piston rings are there sir it matters or it differs it differs in case of the four stroke engine and case of the two stroke engine basically in four stroke engine we use three uh, three kind of piston rings like uh, uh, like first is the compression ring then uh, second is the wiper ring and third is the oil ring and in case of two stroke engine the oil ring is now missing over there that means we have only compression ring and wiper ring wiper okay. ring is also called as the intermediate ring or compression ring too okay why oil ring is missing in second stroke or two stroke yes sir two stroke engine so because it has happened we, uh, so the lubricating oil is mixes with the fuel and then combustion takes place inside the cylinder that means the cylinder, after the combustion the lubricating oil which is mixed up with the uh, fuel is uh, uh, forms a protective layer, protective layer on that uh, cylinder that means we do not uh, required a piston ring board, like scrapping of the oil and transfer to the crankcase also two stroke engine doesn't have the crankcase for that reason oil ring is missing okay uh, what is the function of flywheel and governor explain yes sir so basically flywheel is a rotating mass which is attached to the engine shaft so the inertia of flywheel moderates and reduces the fluctuation in the speed of the engine also it takes the power from the positive stroke or the power stroke and gives this power to the negative stroke or the power consuming stroke this is the function of the flywheel and talking about the governor sir so basically governor is used to maintain the mean rpm speed of the engine so it gives the fuel supply according to the load on engine suppose if the load on engine increases it gives the more fuel supply to produce more amount of power inside the engine cylinder so he can, so the engine can maintain the mean rpm speed this is the function of the governor okay uh, in uh, two stroke in four stroke in which of these stroke engines flywheel is heavier 
and why? So basically, yes sir. Basically, in four-stroke engine, the flywheel is heavier as compared to two-stroke engine. Because we know we know that sir, in the uh, in the four-stroke engine, cycle is completed in a two revolution of the crankshaft, and power stroke is produced after every two revolution of the crankshaft. So in this, there is only one power stroke that is the positive stroke, and another three are power consuming stroke or the negative stroke. So for giving the power to the negative stroke, we require higher amount of mass. So it so it can put higher amount of the inertia while rotating. That means he can give if the mass is high at the engine shaft, we can give the more amount of power during that power consuming stroke. For that reason, the flywheel is, is heavier in a four stroke engine as compared to two stroke engine. Okay. And which type of governor is used in IC engines? I think it's a centrifugal governor, sir. Centrifugal governor. What is centrifugal force? Yes, sir, the centrifugal force is like the force which is acted from away from the center. That is called the centrifugal force. Okay. What is the formula for it? Uh, that is the omega r. It's a force. I have not about centrifugal velocity. It's omega r. It's a v equal to omega r. That is centrifugal velocity. That is m v square by r. M omega square R. Okay. So, uh, you have pen and paper. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, can you make a cycle for VCR? Like VCR uh, cycle. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Just do it. <coughs> Okay, okay. Uh, I am seeing it. What are the main parts of that VCR cycle? Yes, sir, the parts of the VCR cycles are compressor, condenser, thermostat expansion valve, and the evaporator. Can you explain the working of them? Yes, sir. So during the suction stroke of the compressor, <laughs> the refrigerant, which is low pressure and low temperature, drawn from the evaporator at vapor state. And compressor compressor get converted into superheated vapor refrigerant, which is at low, uh, high pressure and high temperature. So this high temperature and high pressurized vapor refrigerant is then transferred towards the condenser. So basically, inside the condenser, condensation takes place at a constant pressure. That means the vapor state is converted into the liquid state. So inside the condenser, refrigerant rejects considerable amount of heat to the cooling medium because of that. It gives the latent heat, so it is converted into the liquid state. So after the condenser, the high pressure, high temperature, superheated vapor refrigerant is converted into the high pressure, medium temperature liquid refrigerant. So then this liquid refrigerant is transferred towards the uh, thermostatic expansion valve. So basically, thermostatic expansion valve is throttle device. That means it controls the flow of refrigerant according to the load on system. So uh, basically, when we transferred the refrigerant. The thermostat expansion valve. The refrigerant is flow from the small opening like orifice plate. That means because of that, the orifice effect is produced over there. That means when the refrigerant or when a liquid is uh, transferred to a choke section, its velocity is increases. Because of that, its pressure is decreases. And when we know that when the pressure is decreases, boiling point decreases. Because of that, the some amount of refrigerant which is in liquid state evaporates. So while evaporating, the refrigerant takes latent heat from that. Uh, liquid. So because of that, its further temperature decreases. So after thermostat expansion valve, 
the high pressure medium temperature liquid refrigerant is converted into the low pressure lowest temperature liquid plus vapor mixture so then this liquid plus vapor mixture is goes inside the evaporator so inside the so evaporator is placed to the space whose uh, whose uh, whose air to be cooled that means inside the evaporator refrigerant absorb considerable amount of heat from the surrounding that is the latent heat and is converted into the vapor state and this again supply to the compressor and cycle is continuously going on okay okay uh, <clears throat> what is the temperature of evaporator coil Generally? that is the minus minus 18 to minus 20 degrees celsius and condenser coil condenser coil temperature is like uh, ranging between 40 to 45 40 degrees celsius to 45 okay okay kiran um, why freezing takes place in evaporator coil freezing, why freezing means, yeah you means, must means have seen, freezing you must have uh, seen the uh, freezing that has been frost under the evaporator coil defrost, defrost, defrosting okay so basically defrosting is happen sir when our uh, cooling effect is occur so we have doesn't uh, have any latent heat so basically because of that the freezing is occur over there because of no latent heat to that uh, evaporator coil so the there is a no heat available that means the compressor trips off and we have achieved the cooling effect uh, is that defrosting that uh, freezing of uh, ice or water on that evaporator coil is good for uh, the refrigeration no sir no sir no sir. it's not, not good for so basically if the fr uh, freezing takes place so the cop of the vapor compression cycle decreases cause we know that sir for the flowing of the refrigerant the line of that coil should be clear if the freezing is occur then a refrigerant is not able to go from that passage or the evaporator coil because of that the cop of refrigerant decreases that means at the compressor the suction pressure reduces and at the condenser the pressure is increases all right uh, okay and Kiran, how we, how do we come to know if VCR system have moisture in it? In it. Yes, sir. So basically, it is uh, we have know about the because uh, yes, sir. So if the COP is decreased drastically, then we uh, as you uh, assume that the moisture is introduced in the system. We know that, sir. After the thermostatic expansion wall there is a sudden drop in pressure that causes a sudden drop in temperature also if the moisture is present at that point it gets freezes and choke that thermostatic expansion lining overall so it doesn't allow the refrigerant flow to that evaporator that means because of that the compressor is continuously working that causes at the suction side the pressure is reduces and at the condenser side the pressure is increases also sir somehow if some amount of liquid is goes inside the uh, compressor we know that the liquids are incompressible in nature because of that it damages the compressor very harshly okay and suppose uh, if the like uh, banging and rattling sound is coming from the compressor we know that the moisture is introduced to our system we have to remove that moisture how you remove that moisture uh, sir the moisture is removed by fitting the dryer just after the condenser that means it has the silica gel <coughs> which is a silica gel which is a, which is on that uh, uh, sponge silica gel which is on the sponge so it uh, desiccate all the moisture from them and then only refrigerant is supplied towards the most expansion okay what is superheat and what is latent heat explain yes sir so basically superheat means the amount of heat given to the vapor above its saturation temperature and talking about the latent heat means the energy which is absorbed or released during the phase change of the during the phase change of the substance without increasing or decreasing its temperature that is called as the latent heat okay and what are law of thermodynamics yes sir the basically there are two laws of thermodynamics they are first sure law the, the, i think uh, sir yes this uh, there are the two law like first law, second law, also there has the one law we call as a zeroth law, also and, sir. But uh, we uh, uh, 
but we assume that there are only two standard law that is the first thermodynamic first law and first thermodynamic second law <clears throat> okay so what is second law yes, sir basically second law is divided into two statement first is the kelvin slang statement and second one is the clausius statement so the kelvin slang statement says that it is <coughs> it is impossible to construct a heat engine working on a cyclic process whose sole aim is to convert heat energy into equivalent amount of work done. that means we cannot generate any kind of the engine which can convert 100% of heat into 100% of work done. and talking about the clausius statement clausius statement says that it is impossible to construct a heat pump or refrigerator which is aim is to transfer heat from lower temperature of body to the higher temperature of body without cause of external aid that is called as the clausius statement okay and there is also third law but uh, you forget to mention it i i would request you go and study after that okay <coughs> okay yeah you may have water your voice is choking okay hello ah yeah you can have water uh, if you are having that your voice okay. from okay to get okay all are you good kiran yes yes okay okay <coughs> kiran what are the types of pumps you know yes sir so basically the pumps are class mainly classified into two types like the non positive displacement pump and positive displacement pump non positive displacement pump is divided into two types like centrifugal pump and axial pump so the positive displacement pump are divided again into two types like rotary pump and reciprocating pump rotary pump is divided again into four type like screw pump vane pump low pump and gear pump and the reciprocating pump is divided into two types like the diaphragm pump and piston pump so the piston pump is again divided into type like the single acting piston pump and double acting piston pump okay what wow what are uh, for what screw pump is used Screw pump. Yeah. So basically, on on board ship, sir. Yeah, you can tell on board ship. Yes, sir. Basically, screw pump is uh, used for transferring the fuel to the from the bunkering tank to the uh, to the HFO uh, to the HFO. Okay. Basically, it's a fuel for fuel. Screw pump. Fuel. Okay. Fuel. Okay. All right. Uh, what is fusible plug and bursting discs explain yes sir so talking about the fusible plug in the boiler can i say that or in case of the compressor yeah in case of boiler or yes, sir. in case of sir. bursting is in a case of compressor okay sir so the talking about the fusible plug fusible plug protect the boiler from the explosion because of the overheating of the boiler so at a normal condition the fusible plug is submerged inside the boiler that is inside the shell of boiler and the fusible plug is lo located just above the furnace so when the water level inside the boiler goes below the unsafe level the fusible plug is exposed to that steam and we know that the steam contains the enthalpy so it will heat that fusible metal because of that heating the fusible metal inside that fusible plug melts so then water is directly travel from that uh, boiler to the combustion chamber and cut off all the fire over there and talking about the bursting disc sir basically bursting disc is a thin copper or brass disc which is situated at the water side of the intercooler and after cooler it protects the casing of the intercooler and after cooler from the explosion because of the leakier tube so if there is a pinhole uh, pinhole of that pressurized air uh, pressurized air pipe so this pressurized air 
leaking directly into the casing of that intercooler after cooler that causes the pressure is building inside that uh, intercooler and after cooler casing so if because of that increase the pressure sometimes the uh, casing of that intercooler and after cooler burst to avoid that the bursting disk is like the weak spot is created so after the after the increase the pressure the bursting disk releases all the pressure pressurized the water and all the uh, uh, all the pressurized water and air from the from that casing and ruptured and after the rupture it will trip the compressor and compressor shut down okay how bursting disks and relief are differentiated why we can't use the relief valve instead of bus bursting disks inside yes, compressor yes sir basically bursting disk is uh, used at a water side and relief valve is used at the air side so basically if we put the relief valve in case of the bursting disk so if the some amount of pressure is rises that causes the relief valve lift from its seat releases only excessive pressure not more than that releases only excessive pressure and uh, come again to its uh, original uh, original uh, like seats back its to original position and suppose if it trips the compressor the water which is inside the intercooler tra intercooler like flow from that pin hole to the compressor because water is at the higher pressure and the compressor which is shut down at the lower pressure so water travels from that piping and goes inside the compressor and if the water goes inside the compressor it causes the corrosion in the shell of the boiler for that we always is bursting this at the water side okay and what is the difference between relief valve and safety valve yes sir so basically relief valve is cause uh, it will resist the only the su suppose sir if the pressure inside the system goes below the predetermined or set pressure the relief valve lifts from its seat and releases only excessive pressure and talking about the safety valve safety valve releases much more pressure than the system pressure suppose okay, okay. so after what like uh, system is still uh, will be running uh, in case of relief valve or in case of safety valve in which uh, at, case uh, system will be running after uh, happening that excess pressure also in both the cases it the uh, system will running sir but in case of the safety valve if the safety valve lifts uh, in case of the boiler if the safety valve lift from its seat it will come back to its original position from 10 to 30 minutes if the boiler is fully throttled see uh, i have thing to say uh, you can cross check safety valve is the for safety of people and relief valve is the for safety of the device the component so in a case of safety valve uh, the system stops okay and i would like to ask you to cross check after okay i think it is uh, i am sure that uh, it is not cause uh, it is not give the any kind of the signal to that uh, boiler so we know that the boiler is continuously fired over there if we fitted the pressure relief valve at in case of the uh, safety valve it tries only the some amount of pressure and again uh, lift back its original position but still the fuel is hitting for the boiler at the furnace is continuously running so that means the relief valve just open close open close open close so if some sometimes if that spring is uh, like uh, not working it will suddenly expose that uh, expose that boiler but in case of the safety valve if the pressure is rises it will resist all the pressure inside the boiler that means if uh, your furnace is continuously running still it will not uh, trip able to trip that uh, uh, shut down that compressor okay all right kiran uh... will be we will be moving with the next question that is cavitation that is very yes, common uh, for which pump uh, centrifugal pump sir. okay so what is the cavitation yes sir talking about the cavitation if the suction pressure goes below the vapor pressure that causes the formation of vapor bubble because the boiling point of that pressure decreases that causes the formation of vapor bubble so this vapor bubbles go along the flow and reaches inside the casing of compress uh, reaching in the uh, casing of the centrifugal pump where they burst at the high pressure region after the bursting it causes uh, it creates the pressurized wave and this pressurized wave strikes on the impeller and on the casing of the centrifugal pump that causes the pitting action of it okay and uh, so how can we prevent cavitation in centrifugal pump yes sir cavitation can be prevented by knowing the npsh if npsh available is greater than the npsh required the cavitation will not occur uh, suppose uh, and also 
if the temperature of the flowing liquid is less the cavitation will not occur and if the cavitation is occur increase the diameter of the suction side and increase the diameter of the eye of the impeller okay what is priming so basically priming is removing the air from the centrifugal pump that is known as the priming so basically priming is done by the two method like uh, mechanical method and the physical method what is that so talking about the physical method the priming funnel is situated on the casing of the centrifugal pump so in case of that we pour the water from the priming funnel and fill the entire casing and the suction of the centrifugal pump so the water take the or water take the area of that uh, air and air is equated from the priming funnel and talking about the mechanical method the positive displacement pump which is fitted at the discharge side of the centrifugal pump which is running continuously with the centrifugal pump so it takes some amount of liquid and complete air from the system and moves to the sump okay uh, kiran what is three phase induction motor what is the yes, principle sir. how it works Yes, sir. So basically, uh, three-phase induction motor converts the converts the make electrical energy into the mechanical energy, and it works on a principle of Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. It states that whenever a current carrying conductor is placed in the magnetic field, an EMF is generated, and when the conductor forms a closed coil, the induced current because of the induced EMF flow through it. so it mainly consist of stator and rotor on stator the field winding is created over there and on the rotor rotor is acts as a short circuit that means uh, the ends of rotor is short circuit so it acts as a closed coil and uh, generally we use the squirrel cage rotor in case of three phase induction motor so when we use the three phase supply to the stator winding that is the <coughs> when we go three phase supply that is the rwb supply to the stator winding the changing magnetic field is induced in the stator winding cause we know that the phase is also this uh, 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 because of that the magnetic field is induced in the stator winding and this rotated around the stator winding with a synchronous speed so the changing magnetic field is induced in such way that the phase difference between three phase that is r y b is 120 degree that means this magnetic field changes after every 120 degree in this way we get the changing magnetic field so this magnetic field cuts the rotor conductor because of that flux cutting the emf is induced in that rotor according to the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction and we know that whenever the current carrying conductor placed in the magnetic field the torque is acted on that conductor and according to lenz's law the direction of induced emf is such that it opposes the cross producing it so the magnet so the induced emf opposes the magnetic field and creates its own new rotating magnetic field Uh, uh, so because of that torque and rotating magnetic field the rotor rotates and we get the mechanical energy in the form of rotating shaft this is the principle and all working of the three phase induction motor okay it was nice explanation uh, kiran how vehicle start can you tell me the mechanism of that you have seen yes, by kicking by self how what yes, is sir. the mechanism yes sir when we uh, when we put the uh, put the key inside the keyway and rotated and starting the self uh, li like starting the that self start so because of that the circuit is uh, closed that means the motor that is the pre engaged type st starter motor which has a very good torque which gives the very good torque that means because of that uh, uh, because of that circuit is uh, co completed the motor draws current from the battery so because of that drawing current from the battery it will start to rotate but uh, there in case of that the solenoid which is uh, which is mounted on the motor which is mounted on the starter motor that means the electrical that is the current or current drawn from the motor by means of that solenoid and it is convert that current small amount of current into large amount of current because solenoid exceeds that current and this large amount of current is drawn from the stepper, starter motor so when the starter motor draws a current when the starter motor draws a current it produces a higher torque and on that shaft of that motor the pinion is fitted over there so when the uh, when that circuit is uh, circuit is completed the 
the plunger which is in the solenoid valve moves in a forward direction because of that the pinion which is acted on that shaft of the motor which is moved in uh, uh, reverse direction because there is a linkage between that uh, plunger and the pinion so when the pinion moves in uh, backward direction it is meshed with the flywheel which is uh, on that uh, engine shaft so because of that meshing because of that contact between the pinion and flywheel flywheel start rotated after some times like 7 to 8 times of the rotation of flywheel the engine operation starts and power stroke is happened because of that after some time the plunger come back to its original direction because of that the pinion moves in forward reverse direction and come in its original direction because of that there is a no contact between the flywheel and the pinion over there it is the mechanism of starting motor okay all right uh, kiran and uh... What is difference between speed of motor and frequency of current? How would you like to explain this? Yes, sir. So basically, frequency means the changing magnitude from positive to negative of the AC current after equal interval of time. That means in one second, the uh, in one second AC can change magnitudes fifty times. That is called as the frequency. And talking about the speed of rotor. There are two types of speed of rotor. That is synchronous uh, speed of rotor and asynchronous speed of rotor. So the synchronous speed means the rotor is rotated with that magnetic field with an equal number of RPM. And talking about the asynchronous speed of the rotor, asynchronous speed means the difference between that magnetic field which is rounded to the stator winding and the speed of the rotor. That is called as asynchronous speed of the rotor. Okay. Um, what if we keep refrigerator open what happened if we keep refrigerator door open it yes, will sir. cool the room if it we... will hurt the room i hit the room what happened yes sir so if we open the refrigerator door for the longer time the temperature of that room eventually increases for cause because of that if you open that uh, door the cooling space is increases because of that compressor do extra work that that means compressor uh, uh, compressor rotor at its full <coughs> full load because of that the heat is produced from the compressor. So this heat uh, heat up the environment of that room and the temperature of the room is eventually increases. Okay. Mm. And if we do some modify, then there is a chance of uh, de uh, cooling the room from refrigeration. Yes. Yes, sir. How it? First of all, yes, sir. First of all, increase the dimension of the compressor and the condenser and compressor condenser thermostat expansion wall is placed out of that room and only you operator is present in that room that is the mechanism uh, that is the same the same mechanism of window split ac yes split the AC. compressor is placed on roof and the refrigerator coil that is the where evaporation yes, effect yes, has sir. been okay so uh, uh, in which engine two stroke or four stroke stuffing box is present? Sir, so it is in the case of two stroke engine. Two stroke. Two stroke main engine. And uh, so, what is the function of that stuffing box and two stroke main yes, engine? Yes, sir. So basically, the function of stuffing box is like, <coughs> in case of the piston ring damage, the exhaust gas directly from from the combustion chamber to the cranky soil, and we know that in a two stroke engine. There are 13,000 liter of the oil at the uh, uh, at the crankcase. If that exhaust gas is uh, goes uh, to that uh, uh, to that crankcase oil and it contaminates all the lubricating oil over there, that causes the uh, that causes reducing the lubricating properties of that oil. For that reason, stuffing box is fitted over there. Okay, all right. Um... And Kiran, uh, in which uh, uh, engine, two stroke or may, uh, or four stroke, we use different oil, cylinder, different cylinder oil and uh, different oil for crankcase. Sir, it is in case of two stroke engine. Uh, why? So because we you know that sir, in a two stroke engine, <coughs> the uh, because in two stroke engine sir, the splash lubrication is not done over there. So. Uh, in two stroke engine, the lubrication is done by uh, different types of two oil. First one is cylinder oil, and second one is like cranky oil. Basically, cylinder oil, which has the higher T bin, that is 70, which is uh, which is uh, forced towards the cylinder, 
or the combustion chamber that means it forms a protective layer along the cylinder liner also it is very basic in nature because sir we know that inside the fuel there is a sulfur present over there and uh, sulfur is a very toxic or acidic to that uh, cylinder liner and if the after the combustion the sulfur is uh, present inside that uh, cylinder liner it will causes the acidic corrosion inside that uh, cylinder liner so we add some additives like potassium uh, potassium or calcium inside that lubricating oil that uh, mixes with that uh, sulfur which is acidic and this uh, acidic and basic formation calls the uh, uh, that causes the cylinder liner very uh, neutral over there for that okay. reason that and neutralizes about the, acids forms form the, acid. inside the combustion chamber yes okay yes, kiran if we are saying that the cylinder all having uh, 70 tbn that additive what is it means that means 70 mg of koh per liter per liter yes ml ml 7 70 mg of uh, <coughs> yes sir i think it's liter mg per liter 70 mg of koh or coh any base that is calcium or uh, uh, potassium base in 1 gram 70 mg uh yeah you can cross check after that 70 mg per liter mg per per into 1 gram of into 1 gram mg 70 mg of koh per gram of K, per gram of that oil okay so the next question is uh, what is gear pump what is what does it use for Yes, sir. So basically, gear pump is an example of positive displacement pump. It mainly consists of two helical or spur gear, which is mounted inside the casing of that screw pump. Is inside that gear pump, sir. So out of that two gear, one gear acts as a driver, which is connected to the prime mover, or which is connected to the prime mover, and other gear is a driven gear, which is continuously meshing with each other. And when the driver gear rotates by means of that. Uh, motor the driven gear is also rotated in opposite direction we know that sir according to bernoulli's theorem high speed creates the low pressure that means when the velocity increases kinetic energy also increases and pressure decreases so because of the unmesh of teeth the volume is increases so the negative pressure or the negative because because of that the partial vacuum is created at the suction side of the gear pump so because of that liquid is then forced towards the casing from the suction side because of that atmospheric pressure so when the liquid is come in a casing it traps between the teeth of the gear and the casing so because of that meshing action the volume of the liquid is reduces because of that its pressure increases because we know that volume is inversely proportional to pressure so when the volume is decreases and pressure increases in this way the pressurized liquid is then transferred towards the discharge part of the gear pump in this way the pressure is created at the discharge part of the gear pump and also there is a no direct flow between the suction side to the discharge side between that true rotating gear because between the true rotating gear the interlocking phenomenon is done so liquid have to travel between the teeth of casing bet- between the teeth of gear and the casing over there okay all right uh... Let me search your next question for you. Mm, that is, what is the just gas economizer? Yes, sir. So basically, exhaust gas economizer means the running the boiler from the flue gases from the engine in order to save the fuel for the production of steam in case of the boiler. It is happen when. Uh, your ship is only at running condition at rest there is no flue gases so the exhaust gas economizer is in such way that all exhaust gases from the all the engines is collected to the exhaust gas manifold and after running the turbocharger the exhaust gas is travel from that uh, is exhaust gas is supplied from the uh, fire tube inside the boiler so 
the fire to be surrounded by that water so after the heating the boiler the flue flue gas is then uh, goes to the atmosphere and that flue gas is contains the enthalpy so it heats the water and converted into steam it is called as the exhaust gas economizer the boiler used for the exhaust gas economizer is composite type fire to boiler composite type fire to boiler what is uh, water to boiler and fire to boiler what is the basic difference and where it is used yes sir the basic difference between water to boiler and fire to boiler is like uh, inside the tube if there is a fire or the flue gases is uh, carried over there that is called as the fire to boiler that means the content in inside the tube decide the type of boiler if the content inside the tube is flue gases or the exhaust gases that causes the fire to boiler and in case of the water if the content inside the pipe is water that called as the water to boiler so <clears throat> water to boiler is used here we required a quicker steam generation from very shorter amount of time so water to boiler is used in case of the oil tanker in order to drive the copd that is cargo oil fuel turbine cargo oil fuel pump and generally all the ships like bulk carrier roro ships uh, has the fire to boiler uh, smoke to boiler and marine squad boiler is which type of boiler it's a fire to boiler it's a fire to boiler Uh, in fire to boiler uh, in water to boiler uh, uh, what inside the pipe it's so in the water to boiler it is a water flowing inside the pipe and in the fire to boiler there is a fire or flue gases flowing to that pipe okay all right uh, kiran uh, explain bernoulli principle <clears throat> yes sir so bernoulli principle state that if a liquid flowing steadily without friction the total energy contained in a mass remains constant at every point along the flow that means the total energy at inlet is always equal to the total energy at outlet that means the total in the sum of pressure energy potential energy and kinetic energy at inlet is equal to the pressure energy potential energy kinetic energy at the outlet okay uh, which type of flow should be uh, it can be a turbulent flow also laminar flow it will be laminar flow okay and it can be for ideal gas or real gas uh, it's for the ideal gas i we know that uh, the incompressible like we know that uh, fl- fluid is flowing steadily without the friction it approaches the ideal law but uh, ideal flow doesn't take place but for that reason we applicable for the real real uh, can uh, uh, can it be applicable for air air moving air with low speed uh, no, sir. No sir, its air is compressible, so the Bernoulli theorem is not applicable over there. If air is compressible uh, and Bernoulli theorem is not applicable, then how could uh, that aeroplane in air is uh, flying after application of Bernoulli principle? Sir, I uh, I say in case of the closed section, that means the in inside the inside the pipe. Inside the pipe, okay. So. Uh, uh i am talking in journal it is applicable for air or not bernoulli principle is applicable for air or not this applicable for the air uh, for the uh, i go the i go the next example uh, uh, simple example <coughs> we know that when there is a storm when there is a storm the chappar lagam ghar chappar yeah te udun jate it will uh, oh god so god it happened So it yeah. has happened because of that, uh, mm. because Bernoulli's theorem. Because we know that the storm has the higher pressure. So when the higher pressure is acting on that roof, mm. it ke- creates the high pressure is an over there. High pressure creates low pressure. Uh, sir, 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 sir. It creates the high velocity. Ah, yeah. So it acts with the high velocity because of that it creates the low pressure at yeah, the bottom. Low. So because of that it lifts and goes away. Exactly. Uh, since uh, the answer will be, it is applicable. applicable for high moving air high velocity air high moving with high speed okay and uh, you were right that it is only applicable for streamline of flow the streamline flow and steady so what is the steady flow kiran mm, yes sir the steady flow means the flow in which the velocity is constant with the equal interval of time that is called as steady flow then what is uniform flow so basically uniform flow means the flow in which the quantity of the liquid flowing in the pipe is remains constant quantity of the liquid 
quantity of the liquid uh, no uh, uniform flow has nothing to do with velocity also sir velocity is also constant if the quantity uh, when the quantity is constant velocity is also constant because it is uh, linear then what is, linear you sir. just said in steady flow uh, velocity is constant both uh, in both the in both the flow velocity is constant but uh, in a uh, streamline uh, in a steady flow the quantity is constant the quantity is constant the amount are you sure about that i am sure i am sure see uh, uniform flow suppose this is uniform flow then uniform flow flow flowing with the constant speed in a particular direction okay all right okay okay so kiran i was feeling doubt with your answer i will suggest you after go after check this okay uniform flow and this uh, steady flow difference okay okay, okay. and so uh, we have uh, few some simple few questions uh, remaining left uh, why sudden drop in temperature at evaporator how would you like to explain why sudden drop in temperature at evaporator sudden drop in temperature in case of evaporator i think the evaporator is the constant temperature process only the latent heat is changing correct it was wrong question why sudden drop in pressure at the time of throttling so basically uh, the time uh, the pressure is dropped because of that the refrigerant which is uh, which is from the condenser is uh, travel from the small opening like orifice plate when it transfer we know that sir when the area reduces at that point velocity increases and velocity increases the pressure is increases because velocity is directly proportional mm -hmm. to the velocity is increases then pressure is increases pressure is decreases decreases because velocity is inversely proportional to pressure man <clears throat> pressure is decreased yeah it was right it was right mm. so uh, kiran in a case of four stroke diesel engine inlet valve opens at the time of which stroke intake stroke compression stroke power stroke exhaust stroke it is like uh, some uh, Yes, sir. It is like uh, forty degree after the BDC no, no. Uh, during the exhaust stroke. During the exhaust stroke, yeah, inlet valve right because right. of the blowdown of the exhaust gases. Yeah. That means the exhaust gases has the has the higher pressure directly move from the combustion chamber with the pressure that is called as the blowdown of the exhaust gases. That is the first step of the scavenging. It's a pre-scavenging. It's first step of scavenging. Okay, all right. And when the inlet valve closes at the time of which stroke inlet valve closes at the time of which stroke it is after the uh, after the suction that is in case of two stroke uh, are you asking in case of two stroke no no in case stroke? of four stroke diesel engine i just mentioned that okay. Okay. inlet valve closes at which stroke its intake stroke compression compression stroke, stroke. Yeah, compression correct. compression stroke correct, correct. because sir uh, because because we know that sir there amount some amount of exhaust gas also present inside the engine, engine cylinder so during the compression the uh, fresh charge moves the exhaust gas outward because that the compressed uh, because of that suction air has the uh, lower density and the exhaust gas has the higher density so it pushes the exhaust gas uh, then it will be called as post scavenging post scavenging post scavenging all right all right um now tell me uh, something about tappet clearance yes sir basically tappet clearance is the gap between top of wall stem and the rocker arm when wall is at close condition so the function of tappet clearance is like it is the small expansion gap given to the uh, given to the top of wall stem in order to accommodate the effect of thermal expansion uh, so basically if the tappet clearance is less then wall will be open early and close lately and if the tappet clearance is more then wall will be open lately and close early okay the maximum tappet clearance provided for that uh, top of wall stem is like 0.07 to 0.08 mm all right 
uh, and it is measured by the filler gauge filler gauge what is this snap gauge uh, basically snap gauge is uh, i don't have the name so what is venturi meter uh, Yes, sir. Basically, venturi meter is uh, used for checking the flow rate of the liquid flowing through the pipe. Uh, and which uh, device is used for checking the velocity of fluid? Pit or tube. Right, that's right. Uh, correct. Nice. And uh, Kiran, how current is produced in alternator? How would like to explain this? What is the principle behind it? All the mechanism. Yes, sir. So basically, alternator is used in automobile. in order to produce electricity from the mechanical energy that means it produces the electric electricity in a form of ac current and this ac current is converted into dc current by means of the rectifier and this dc current is stored inside the battery so inside the alternator we doesn't have the any permanent magnet over there we creates the electromagnet over there that means it mainly consist of stator and rotor on stator there is a armature winding is bounded on the poles and in on the rotor there is a field winding is bonded so when we give the small amount of dc current from the battery to the slip ring which is mounted on the rotor so the rotor is excited that means it creates the magnetic field but still the current is not induced or generated or flowing inside that uh, stator winding cause for generation of current we require the changing magnetic field so this changing magnetic field is created in such way that we rotated the rotor by means of the mechanical energy from the crankshaft over here so when the rotated rotated the magnetic field which is induced by like the changing magnetic field so because of the changing magnetic field according to the faraday's law of electromagnetic conductor conductor if the changing magnetic field is associated with the conductor the emf producer inside that conductor and when a conductor forms a closed coil the induced emf induced the current because the induced the current flow through it so because of that the because of the changing magnetic field the current is induced inside that uh, armature winding so uh, and armature winding is pull loose so the current produce uh, current is travel from the armature winding and it is then uh, okay this it is basically uh, the principle of faraday's law of electromagnetic <coughs> electromagnetic induction, induction is producing a emf yes uh, in a closed circuit uh, that is called induced current all current. right so tell me uh, the name of five workshop tools uh, that is hand uh, that can be used manually hand tool uh, hand yes, tool uh, five with their functions yes sir basically uh, the <coughs> hammer for the striking or applying the force on any surface that is called the hammer then mallet so mallet uh, so mallet is like gentle hammering on a surface without creating the dents on it that is the function of mallet So basically, uh, then uh, for then uh, like there are various type of measuring device, like measuring tapes for measuring the di- measuring the dimension of the any uh, any material or the component, and then uh, different types of wrenches over there. Wrenches is used for the uh, tightening the nuts and bolt. Then adjustable screwdriver, adjustable wrenches, adjustable spanners. Also, spanner is used for the tightening and loosening the nut. then allen key over there so basically allen key is for the allen nut for uh, uh, for the tightening and closing of the nut okay and then uh, uh, like chisels chisels for uh, r- uh, rubbing the surface on that r- surface to making the surface more smooth uh, okay all right uh, kiran can you define ductility yes sir so basically the ductility is property of substance it can regain in its original shape after removal of external applied force that is called as the ductility okay and what is plot- sorry sir sir no 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 no, no uh, uh, not again ductility. please so basically ductility is a property of uh, substance from which a thin wire can be drawn is called as the ductility okay and what is malleability so the property of uh, substance from which a thin sheet can be drawn is called as the property malleability okay and 
वॉट इज वर्क हार्डनिंग वर्क हार्डनिंग वर्क हार्डनिंग सो बेसिकली वर्क हार्डनिंग इज यूज टू मेक द मेटल मोर हार्ड basically it is for the increasing the hardness of that uh, component so basically if we applied the elastic force or the like uh, pull force on any component it will reaches at its uh, at its uh, so it will reaches at its peak point so when we remove the force some amount of stresses is created on that uh, in that material so again so whenever we required the use of component firstly it will tackle or overcome that uh, first forces and then the material is get elongated that all of the work hard is work hardening is good for material is for good for the material uh, what it increases yield strength so basically yes work hardening does work hardening increasing yield strength or not yes sir yes sir it is increases the yield strength okay and what is gray uh, cast iron made of uh, like uh, what cast is cast iron, iron? Uh, it's uh, brittle or ductile material first tell me it is a brittle material because it has the more carbon content okay it has less carbon content it is higher <laughs> compressive strength or higher tensile strength it has higher compressive strength it is uh, correct uh, for that reason it is used for the beds of that uh, <coughs> lathe machine lathe machines okay all right uh, cast iron is made up of which type of iron and under which pig condition iron. pig iron and that pig iron. Uh, with with how it is uh, made in a blast furnace blast furnace with pig iron okay and uh, what is the iron ore what iron ore or called So basically iron ore means the extraction of the iron from its original condition from the earth okay uh, so that is called as iron ore uh, iron ore called hematite okay aluminum ore car called uh, i don't know so. martensite bauxite bauxite <laughs> okay so what is toughness how would you define toughness of a material so basically toughness is a property to resist the material from bending because of the repetitive repetitive applying load that is called as a toughness toughness and hardness basically hardness is a property to resist the abrasion scratches on the material uh, correct uh, what is fatigue stress and what is creep stress yes sir what is fatigue so and creep yes sir basically fatigue means the resist basically it is a resistance created by the material when the repetitive or fluctuating load is suddenly applied or suddenly removed from the body that is called as the fatigue and talking about the creep it is the opposes the failure of the material because of the steady load on the component over there okay correct uh what is the difference between isotropic and an isotropic and isotropic and an isotropic or non isotropic so talking about the isotropic the all the material properties is constant in all direction that is called as the isotropic material and talking about the an isotropic material or allotropic material it has the not similar properties throughout that uh, cross section okay. that uh, the best example for the allotropic material is like uh, glass okay diamond is isotropic or an isotropic is isotropic okay diamond can conduct uh, is a good conductor of heat or electricity good conductor of uh, heat okay okay uh, why not heat i think it's heat uh, why not uh, electricity because it doesn't have uh, any uh, why not electricity so basically it doesn't have any electrical uh, electrons free electron i don't know free, free electron as you remember the graph the structure of graphite it will have a free electron there is difference it's between different. graphite structure and diamond structure diamond structure is almost packed okay and uh, can you tell me the allotrope of carbons 
allotropes of carbon it's a diamond graphite martin said no then yeah, no. i don't know buck minister fellering it's a new allotrope that has been allotrope is the other form of carbon uh, i must okay so my next question is what is the difference between corrosion and erosion so basically corrosion means the I'm talking about the erosion erosion is the mechanical destruction on the material that is called as the uh, erosion and talking about the corrosion corrosion means the surface of the material is uh, forms a protective layer on it that causes the corrosion and uh, if you have to explain uh, like a uh, good for two minutes okay, all right all right take your time hello Uh, I have asked you uh, the principle of galvanic cell. No sir. Uh, so what is the principle of galvanic cell? So basically, galvanic cell means the conversion of the heat energy into the electric energy. That is the function of galvanic cell. Okay. When the redox reaction is formed inside the electrolyte, it causes the creation of heat when the heat creates the electricity also okay and uh, what is uh, corrosion on like uh, what is sacrificial anode that is the sacrificial anode have you heard of it no sir okay uh, what are different types of corrosion so basically the corrosions are mainly classified into two types like dry corrosion and wet corrosion so the uh, another types of corrosion are like galvanic corrosion pitting corrosion then uh, i only know that much okay well, how pitting corrosion yes, sir so basically pitting corrosion happen when there is a small hole on the surface this area becomes the anodic and another area becomes the cathode because of that the corrosion takes place at the anode okay uh, so i will be asking you some electrical questions more then we'll be winding up this uh, mock interview session uh, what is generator and on what principle it it works so basically generator converts the mechanical energy into the electrical energy the generator is work on a faraday's law of electromagnetic induction it states that whenever current carrying conductor is placed in magnetic field and emf is induced and when a conductor forms a closed coil the induced current becomes the induced in flow through it on that principle the generator works there are two types of generator like ac generator and dc generator this generator has this slip uh, slip ring Here the basic unit had a speed ring. Speed ring acts as a commuter over there. Okay. Uh, uh, what you said on what principle generator works? It's on the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Principle of mutual induction. I no, it's a Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. According to me. Okay. All right. Mutual induction is for the transformer. Yeah, you are correct. Actually. what is heat exchanger kiran basically heat exchanger means the taking dissipated heat from the any uh, from the any material that is called as the heat exchanger like uh, there are different types of heat exchanger like the plate heat exchanger and uh, and shell type of heat exchanger okay what is uh, which is better if since which are having which is having high efficiency Plate. I think it's the plate type of heat exchanger because of that titanium plate is used over there. 
there is a no contact between the medium because of that the proper heat exchanger takes place over there okay and what is the principle of transformer what is transformer basically a transformer use user for the uh, basically transformer is a static device which can converts the electrical energy from one circuitry to the another circuitry because uh, with a direct contact of that wire that means it is increases the amount of voltage and decreases amount of voltage there are two types of transformer like the uh, two types of transformer like uh, the step up transformer and step down transformer in step up transformer the secondary windings has the more turns than the primary winding because of that more voltage is flowing from the secondary winding in output we get the higher voltage that is called the step up transformer and in case of that uh, step down transformer the secondary coil has the lower turns on it because of that the voltage produced at the output is lower that is called the step down transformer okay and what are uh, what is the difference between synchronous motor and asynchronous motor so basically synchronous motor means the rotor of the motor rotated with that same rpm with that magnetic field which is generated inside the stator that means the magnetic field which is produced in the stator is same the magnet is same the rotor speed of the rotor that is called as a synchronous motor on top of the a synchronous motor the speed of the rotor is less than the speed of that magnetic field which is generated inside around that uh, stator winding okay what is brake power so basically brake power means the actual power which is available at the crankshaft that is the useful power which is available at the crankshaft okay and the capacity of uh, engine uh, that is uh, told by what is that like uh, it is uh, told it that is as the like uh, uh, cc sir it's cc ah uh, c so what is cc that, that is that? cubic Uh, cubic centimeter cubic centimeter is what that represents the volume which that volume is the swept volume swept volume swept volume oh correct it's a swept volume only so now the last question is what is fresh water generator on what on what principle does it works sir basically the fresh water works on a venturi effect so we know that sir when a uh, liquid is uh, transferred or from the restricted area or choke section its velocity increases and the pressure decreases so when the pressure decreases the boiling point of water is also decreases so uh, when the boiling point of the water decreases like uh, when the pressure decreases the boiling point of water decreases so water boils at lower pressure or at lower temperature that the room temperature because of that boiling of the water when we suck the sea water from the sea water from the sea by means of that main sea water pump and supply to that restricted area or the choke section the temperature is decreases because of that the water try to get evaporated so this water is converted into the this water is condensed and after the condensation we get the fresh water that is the basically main principle of the fresh water generator oh, actually principle name that is which principle venturi Vinch, venturi effect venturi effect and which device is uh, used for producing that effect venturi effect venturi meter venturi meter we can say that the we can say it has the main orifice plate okay and have you also heard of eductor ah uh, yes yes eductor we can say that it's eductor what is the function of that uh, increasing the pressure by increasing the velocity is the function of that uh, uh, eductor basically eductor uh, decreases the boiling point of the water by reducing its pressure running point of water by okay so this was all about your technical questions uh, i would like to ask you kiran have you felt guilty last time and how did you manage to get overcome by apologizing or what sir i have felt guilty for myself when i was in my final year of uh, engineer uh, so i put out uh, i put on lot of it that is 115 kg so i feel very guilty at that time because i am not able to give the do my attempt when i was in my last year of the b uh, because if i clear the exam entry but i am still not able to clear the medical 
because my BMI is not up to the mark. I have the higher cholesterol. I have the fatty liver acid. So I am very like uh, feel guilty. So uh, I take time. I invest time on my physical health and I convert or transform myself in this way. When uh, was uh, when the last time you lost your temper? When last time? Temper. You got yes, angry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when I was uh, going on a road, the one uh, harsh driving uh, biker just hit the puppy, which is at the roadside. So at that uh, point, I chases that. Uh, uh, firstly, I say. Uh, firstly, I go through the puppy and uh, showing you some like uh, feeding you some water and biscuits. And after that, I chasing that rider and scolded on it. Sir. Okay, all right. Uh, Kiran, uh, which type of you worker, uh, a team worker, or you would like to do things by your own without any? I support. like to work uh, with a team, sir. Because with a team, we have the more number of minds, and if we have the more number of minds, we can have more number of idea. Out of which idea, which is based, we can select it by asking all the all the uh, people, sir. So we can take the advice from people, and suppose uh, if we work alone, we can make that work in one hour. But if we uh, if we do the same work with the team. The time required is very less, and we can learn more thing from the other experience. Okay, does it will not produce a uh, uh, a thought of comparison, and comparison I, is not a good for good thing. I think uh, it's not, sir. It is differ people to people, sir. This thought it differs people to people. Okay, and. Which is best, comparison or competition, and how? I think I think competition is best. But it's the healthy competition. Healthy. But it's the healthy competition. Okay. Because of the comparison, we cannot compare any two people. Because some have the higher quality, some has the lower quality. But the lower quality has the uh, but uh, people which have lower quality has the higher higher properties, which any with different aspects is like. So we cannot compare people. We cannot judge the people on any point. Okay, all right. Uh, Kiran, uh, so what do you believe that that luck does matter, or only hard work can get you selected? I think it's a lot of hard work with a certain amount of luck. Luck factor is also important over here. Luck factor is also important over here. But luck factor is also uh, luck factor is key. When we do hard work, if we do not uh, hard work, the luck factor is not with us. All right. How you accept failure? How do I accept? Uh, yes, sir. You, uh, you know that lots of days uh, in your age, in our age, people used to have the uh, like for making themselves uh, uh, unconscious or tranquilized. They use cigarette smoking, drinking. While in depressed mode after getting failed, you must have heard of the story of the students. They do some time suicide for which they have hard work, and you have also heard about that some guy who was willing to have 95 percent, but he had only 90 percent, and then he all then he did suicide. How would you see that? How would you see that? Basically, uh, in that era, a lot of people just. Uh, Focusing on its physical health, not from the mental health. Mental health is also uh, a very important, uh, very important topic for the humans. Suppose if you had the good mental health, we can make the proper decision. We can try to find the next way. Like we have to overcome that failure, which you say that the failure. So if you have the good mental health, then we can uh, overcome that failure very easily by making the different types of plans. By advising the people. Okay. How you have felt uh, faced the last failure of yours? What was your experience? My last failure is the same. My last failure is that my transformation journey, as I said that. 
it was a success it was a huge success but sir yes sir it's success which is came after the failure okay okay all right so suppose if i don't select you what you gonna do yes sir basically at that point i give my 100% i challenge myself each and every day and suppose you do not select me it's uh, not a, uh, it's not a big deal for me but i come again and uh, next time i ensure that i will get selected okay i have a cross question for you suppose as you said luck matters some mishap happens and you couldn't manage to again and if yes, luck says if luck says that it is not written to you come into the merchant navy field and it was your hard dream it was your dream that you really want to live that it was the dream you have built up in your mind from years back it was a dream for you to work on a big machine i think to go uh, i already say that uh, it was dream but if you don't get it so how you gonna live your remaining life without this dream are you are will you be able to live or you will be a lifetime depressed yes sir not uh, i am not a depressed kind of person basically i fight back again and uh, selecting the field which is correlated with my technical background and my mechanical background so i work with there like uh, if i do not selected in the merchant navy i tried to build my career in a design in a design uh, uh, would not be there uh, any grudges uh, in your heart that what if i would have selected i have dreamt of there will be always grudges there will be there won't be any grudge in your heart i think sir as a human uh, we have the emotions okay. and this emotions is also uh, with me so i have some kind of disappointment in my heart but it's not like that i am getting depressed i am not able to manage my life i am a fighter sir i fight back the situation yeah with this is- spirit that we all are fighter here never give up before the fight ends before the war ends thank you so much for your time kiran it was nice to have your interview and it was more nice session with you and i will be uh, turning off uh, recording and then after we will be discussing the feedback thing thank you kiran thank you so much